man i just voice my opinion on somebody who i've dealt with before not one time not two times but probably like four or five times already and it's the same result if the second offer is concluded i think it's about 86 million the first one was 91 and the second was 86 million dollars um and if it doesn't go through it's fine the merit is still there 100 percent owned by the government of ghana not me as you know, Glenn Lal said I own the Marriott there. Still and I was honest about my experience with Binik. I just said that I think that Binik thinks he's too big for, um, for work with me. And until he come off his high horse, then we could work together. Because every time we've had communication, it always went... But the magnitude of the smuggling, I don't want to speculate. But we're going after the people who are doing it. And when I spoke about it about a couple of months back, we were dead serious about it. We we're dead serious then, but we were, there's been a lot of quiet work by the law enforcement agencies. And I want to say again that people who are involved, they're going to feel the full weight of the law enforcement agencies and the laws of Ghana. And he suddenly wake up. And they always blame the small miners who are not declaring. They always got to put the weight, the guys got to put the thing on the small man back to fetch the burden. It's the small scale miners. So this project will be built. The gas to energy project will be completed. It will deliver 300 megawatts of power. It would preserve, produce stable cheaper electricity to the people of this country and also from that project we'll start becoming a net exporter and but yes they was talked tough thursday he had over three years to get tough on gold smuggling but he's sitting there twiddling his thumb welcome back to the flight hit that subscription button buddy and stay updated with everything that's trending in Guyana and the diaspora. Thanks. It's heard from the USXM Bank on the loan for the gas to energy project. You had said so in the second quarter, I believe. Yes, so the thing is that um, the, the last report I got from Ashni saying they've been dealing with this from our embassy there is that the it's being prepared at the technical level. They came, they did the environmental assessment on their own. So that was a good thing that they came because of the attempt by these local people linking up with foreign NGOs to try to block it. So there was an independent assessment of the entire project, including the environmental um, issues. And so, I think as soon as that report is ready, then it will go to the to the board. I don't know exactly when, but I I believe we may maybe a month or two. I don't. I have to find out from Ashni. I didn't follow up on that. But right now, we the project is moving forward, and we're we're paying for it. We're paying we're paying for it from our resources. So it's moving forward. So we're not desperate. To, we are at a point where. We have to stop this project because the loan is not coming through. And we have a number of alternatives too. That we, I explained this in the past that we are we're not a party or a government that don't deal with that don't have contingencies. So this project will be built. The gas to energy project will be completed. It will deliver 300 megawatts of power. It would preserve, produce stable, cheaper electricity to the people of this country. And also from that project, we'll start becoming a net exporter, an exporter of cooking gas from an importer now. And we will be able to pay back for this project even from the proceeds of the sale of the liquid. That's, that's it. We're, and we are firm in that. It's, gonna, it's going to happen. 
So this is this is where and what's there? Oh, the Marriott. So I don't think that company the offer revolves a lot about that, around that gentleman. So there is a second rank bidder, and but I don't know where Nissel is in the discussion with the second rank bidder. But I said the last time I spoke on this matter, just after they got the man, man passed away, that I um, we are not desperate to sell the Marriott. We're not desperate um, to sell the Marriott. So if the second offer is concluded, I think it's about $86 million. The first one was 91 and the second was $86 million. Um, and if it doesn't go through, it's fine. The Marriott is still there, 100% owned by the government of Ghana, not me. As you know, Glenn Lal said, I own the Marriott there. Still got to come back to me. He promised me to, to bring me the details about a year and a half now, how I own the Marriott and who owned the Marriott. He didn't show back. I th no, no, we, there is no urgency. There is no urgency in any of these matters. It's, it's state asset. It's there and it has great value. It has great value. And I'm so pleased that we spent 50 something million dollars and we got like that off of early 90 million dollars. Yes. Dr. Drag, dear, good afternoon. Liron Bramalensi. And just two things. One, you spoke about um, miners not paying taxes to the gold board, not, not selling their gold to avoid taxes. Uh, from the investigation, is there an approximate value on how much taxes are being lost? And to tie to that, the, the gold smuggling. Can, is there no is no the, what I was saying is that the evasion if you smuggle you don't pay the royalty and the others so it's a loss of taxes too um, so that is what I meant by that but the magnitude of the smuggling I don't want to speculate but we're going after the people who are doing it and when I spoke about it about a couple of months back, we were dead serious about it. We we're dead serious then, but we were, there's been a lot of quiet work by the law enforcement agencies. And I want to say again that people who are involved, they're going to feel the full weight of the law enforcement agencies and the laws of Ghana. And yesterday, um, a businessman, Frank Stanley, trying if I can quote just to be sure, be prepared for significant price hikes in consumer goods and other items due to over 150% surge in freight costs. I know government has been putting a number of measures in place to address these issues. Um, is a discussion going oh, to be Oh, that Frank Stanley, uh, yeah. subsequently, I think he removed the post. Um, because what what is clear is that when there was a price hike in freight, the freight charges moved from just around $2,500 and $3,500 for 20 foot and a, a 40 foot container to about $20,000 per container, just the freight to move it from China to Guyana, the same container in the COVID period because there were shortages. What we did is we adjusted, we kept the old freight rate constant. So you pay taxes on the CIF value of the goods, the cost, insurance, and freight. So if the cost remained the same and the insurance remained the same, if the freight had gone up significantly, that means our taxes would go up. So it would complicate them. It would even make it even more inflationary. We kept the old freight rate for the calculation of the taxes. So they did not pay any more taxes than they were paying before. So the entire growth in costs was the freight the cost that they were paying, the increased cost for freight. 
So a lot of those people, when the freight rates came down back to $4,000 or dollars, we still kept the old arrangement in place, the old rates, but the freight rates came down back. They never adjusted the prices for the consumers. They kept the same selling price, but they had this huge benefit. So now the freight rate has gone up back. We don't believe that there should be major pass-through of these rates to the consuming public. So I would urge people not to buy from some of these people who are, who are using every opportunity to almost gouge. They want to gouge the consumers. So I saw another businessman, I can assure you, he posted that increases in taxes. There's no increase in taxes we're using because of the, the higher freight. We're using the old freight, freight, freight rate too. I want, might want to mention his company. No, maybe I shouldn't mention his company here. But they're planning to gouge people. Now, clearly the freight rate has gone up. And what has happened is because of what's happening in the, the Red Sea, because of the, you know, the Yemenis, the Hutu, um, they are, the vessels have, can't tra traverse that sea. They have to come all the way around. So that has pushed up the cost of freight. And then the bottleneck in the Panama Canal. Those two things have impacted. So in any inflation here, it's not driven by domestic policies. It's largely because of these two events, which we are hoping to abate, because if the war, the Israel's unconscionable attack on the Palestinian people were to end, that would abate the situation back, hopefully, in the, in the Red Sea. And then I think the Can Panama Canal, because it was in the drought period, they had wa water shortages there. So that's coming back to normalcy. But I think some of these people are looking to gouge, gouge the consumers all the time. Many of them never adjusted their rates downwards from the COVID period. And we have, by, by keeping the rate constant, on an average, we probably give up about five to to eight billion dollars a year. One love, Delta Nine family. Well, y'all yeah, just hear everything that the VP had to say, everything that he had to say right there, and that right there should make a lot of persons start to contemplate the activities and make a lot of persons start to think about a lot of things that are going on around them because the VP said look we making sure that we give you a prior warning that we and the full extent of the law is coming and guess what we even thinking about restructuring the law for make sure that we could hit y'all harder for doing certain things like what gold smuggling so allegedly and not even allegedly in this case guy hear it directly from the vp himself he's saying look watch yourself god we coming for y'all well good you hear all of that but honorable minister duncan is saying that's only tough talk buddy the man don't say them thing enough time and He's rebutting a lot of other things that the VP had to say. Honorable Minister Duncan is saying, he's just talking tough. He done said them things there before and nothing can come out of it. He said he's just running him out upon them type of thing. And the Honorable Minister is rebutting a lot of other things that the VP had to say. So we're going to get right into that piece of content from the Minister rebutting some of the content that you just heard the VP speak on. He suddenly wake up and they always blame the small miners who are not declaring. They always got to put the weight, the guys got to put the thing on the small man back to fetch the burden. It's the small scale miners. He suddenly wake up. Margaret, Shelley King, Leslie, Renella, Gwyneth, 
is always on this small man's shoulders to fetch this thing down the road. This is their problem now. But yes, Davis talked tough Thursday. He had over three years to get tough on gold smuggling. But he's sitting there twiddling his thumb. You think it's the judiciary twiddling their thumb? Hola, I'm coming wrong by the judiciary. The Chief Justice high fall. Close line, drop kick. You gotta be old wrestler fan. <laughs> to follow there. The AG yesterday. Slap to the chest. High fall, drop kick. Close line. Oh, the Chief Justice was lift it. Live it is very ordinary. Lift it. In some comments she made against the AG. Oh, she wailed into him. Oh, she beat him yesterday like a runaway slave. <laughs> Wait for those comments. <laughs> Valetta Bramel. Gloria Chester. Gloria, how you doing? Gloria, how you doing? Hey, Gloria, make some cake for me, yeah? Gloria, share some cake with me. It was two years ago, Gloria. I hope you're feeling better. Uh. Yep. <laughs> yep. I'm not a big cake person. Fun cake if anything. But I had a I had a make an exception for Gloria. Make Gloria black cake an example. Was a thing of beauty. <laughs> I'm not a big cake person. Uh, some friends of some friends of mine got married about a year ago. I think it was July last year. Right? Still got a wedding cake in the fridge. <laughs> and I'm gonna celebrate the one year anniversary with them. We can eat cake. You know, took it out the other day, looked at it, smelt it. Cake is perfectly preserved. That's why you know black cake. Close to a year we got that cake. When my wife and I got married, we had a cake for a long time. I'm not a big cake person. I'm not. I'm not. I'm, honestly, I'm not. And if anything, I'd go for a, a sponge cake. So when I eat your black cake, you know your cake is well eaten. Vernon, <laughs> Wenda, Debbie, Beatrice. And if two years after talking about the cake, you must know its properness. Gold smuggling. The fella said he can tackle it aggressively. Yes, they was talk tough Thursday. Talk tough, do nothing. <laughs> talk tough, do nothing. Oh, they're going after. I want to tackle crime the same way. Crime out of control. Aggressively. I want to tackle. The carnage in our roads, the same way, aggressively, corruption, aggressively, right? Aggressively, you see, in all that I said, Naomi only forgot one thing, you know, one thing. I expected it. <laughs> Margaret, I expected it. Leonard Zephyr, I expected it. Folks, I'm coming to New York. I'm going to pinpoint the date. We know the place. Elizabeth, take that note. We got a meet and greet in Brooklyn. We got the place already. You'll see the flyer circulating more formally. I'm not going to detain you there this morning. Abira, I ain't want to hear no, I ain't want to hear no sad stories. Right? I put in this thing on the day when you walk in. All of you. I want to see y'all. And if they got the entry fee, don't let it keep you from me. <laughs> I am yours. And you are mine. My beloves. I think I quote in the Proverbs there. But go. But stop talk. Do nothing. Look this one. I tell you all tough talk. They feel they're losing a PR battle. Is there any how? Cats, cats. 
kind of governance. So you got to come out and talk tough. Government to go after defaulting contractors. How many times you hear this? How many times do you see Edgel on the ground berating some contractor? And he back and even turn yet in his business as usual. How many times do you hear this? Name one contract that they've gone after in any meaningful way. If they stop one contract, the man can talk to him more. He don't feel it. And they know this. Look, for instance, case in point. You all remember how Jack Neal said Sue had soiled his good name, his reputation, his world renown? Yeah. Do you remember that? Oh, how strong has Jack Neal gone after Sue? Jack Neal has gone after a prodigy. As if it's them went in the living room with Isabel Young. That's how he's gone after Ipadji. As though it's, it's, it's Ipadji soil his good name. As though it's Ipadji slammed and libeled him. How was he gone after Susu? Should they write back in the compound perhaps? Uh, handling all the arrangements. While you're on the government side. How strong has he gone after Sue? Take that as your barometer. Take that as your measure. Take that as your plumb line. You're on Harding, Leslie. Let's say Aubrey Barker Road is a mess. And I know Leslie is using some very, very um reserved words. It's a mess. Leslie says. It's true. They are one of who so that's how Sue disappeared. You even know who so that is how Sue has disappeared. That's how Sue has disappeared. Just like that. He said, and go after defaulting contractors. <laughs> My god, Bardness did not fulfill any criteria to be granted your contract. Bordness projects were stalled. Farming a uh, primary school, another stalled one. Have they gone after that? Huh? Make them make sense. Have they gone after them in any meaningful way? No. Marcia Jackman. Huh? No. Marcia says Norton is her president. No. <laughs> Some of you, I want to distract me you now. Right? Margaret and Naomi wake up this morning and they decide they, they're going to do violence. They can choose violence. <laughs> look, look, sorry, here now. It was talk, 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 Thursday. Talk, talk, but do nothing. NGOs with selfish agendas. Will not halt Ghana's development. It's what we talking about here. When he says NGOs will not halt Ghana's development, I feel like he's talking about the Exim Bank, the US Exim Bank, who refused to fund the um, Wales Gas to Show project. NGOs will not be allowed to halt. I feel like it's them. <laughs> he's talking about. Not a headline in today's paper. He said, with or without them, the project is going forward. Oh, they've got skeleton modernization factory written all over it. Another white elephant pushing it the same way. They were warned. Jack, do your boy, this thing here got trouble. No, 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 he know it all. His middle name is Erasmus. He know everything. Pushed ahead. Now the trucking came from um, Skeldon, Albion. That's how much that plan worked out. That's how much that plan, that plan, that plan worked out. How is that going for us? You see, pushing ahead, right? NGOs with selfish agendas. Exim Bank, we talking about, right? 
is the um is the idb who don't want fun nothing to do with um a mile of falls or a mile of stand up those ngos and as we on ngos a part of me said even though it has been deprived of state resources we're still trudging along i saw them issuing grants recently to some folks young entrepreneurs i think it was and that's what Ipachi says. We're still moving along. We undead yet answer by Tabi Bam Bam. <laughs> so you heard what the Honorable Minister had to say. Now you heard both sides of the event. Both sides of the conversation was just heard right there. You heard what the VP had to say. And then you hear directly what the minister had to say. So now Guyana and why stinking persons that are a part of Delta 9 media family. Now we get a chance to analyze both sides of the conversation. Cause guess what? We ain't just picking on one side and just hearing on one side of the thing and saying, eh, hey, this is how we like it, or this is the people that we listen to, or this is we party people. No, we want to hear both sides of the conversation, analyze it so that we could make sure nobody pulling we. I'm making we no fool. You understand what I'm trying to say? So, you hear what the VP had to say, and you heard what the Honorable Minister had to say. So, guess what, Guyana? Now you analyze it, and you come to your own conclusions as to what is really going on on the ground in Guyana. And then they got this whole other conversation going on in the entertainment space. In the entertainment space right now, Isam Benzi is saying, Isam Benzi is saying that allegedly, allegedly, B Nick is playing a big buy. He's saying that B Nick is playing a game like if he too big to be a part of of certain productions that they might be working on. He's saying that more than on, on more than one occasion, him and B-Nick, look, let, let me tell y'all directly what's going on. Let me hear directly from Isam Benzi, and he can tell me directly what's the beef between he and B-Nick. You really gotta watch what you're saying on the internet at times because people just take your words. And people just take your opinions and them thing and try to make problems. You understand? Like for instance, in this particular post, this man saying, I call out this, this media entity or whatever it is, saying, I calling out this person. Me call out nobody, soldier man. I just voice my opinion on somebody who I've dealt with before not one time not two times but probably like four or five times already and it's the same result you understand i put out a post talking about um who people would like to see me work with in in terms of music what's not even that would be just music it could be on videos it could be on graphics it could be on whatever because i do a lot of graphics with people a lot of and plus work with people on music videos and them thing right direct on them thing but i put out the post people Tag like B Nick and tag um, Trevon, Trevon Vibes, Azariel, Calvin Burnett. People tag us a lot of people. And the thing is, I was responding to everybody. Just, you know, just to make everybody you know that, okay, I see you, what you're saying and what's not. Now, the, uh, somebody said B Nick. And I was honest about my experience with B Nick. I just said that I think that B Nick thinks he's too big for, um, for work with me. And... Until he come off his high horse, then we could work together. Because every time we've had communication, it always went an F. And I always try my best for talk with the guy because I love working with people. I work with a lot of people. I work with a lot, lot of people. You understand? And I know how to deal with different, different people. But there is just some people who are going to be like, you know, they're up here. You understand? And I can't blame them because they're driven by the ego. And that's just the truth. Me ain't got nothing against B Nick. I love B Nick music. I can never sing B Nick music. Me hate B Nick. You understand? But I could be honest about me experience with somebody. His experience probably might be different with other people. Other people might see him humble or what's not. 
but it's different when it comes to music because music is a thing where when people come for work together like their egos is there to the sky and it's happened with most Guyanese people um Guyanese artists their egos done they shooting through the roof for work with somebody now i work with like people like um well i work right now we me and trevon vibes working me and nesta working um me and stiffy stiff work me and cj me and even me and azaria worked together before that was a long time ago me and tamika marshall work me and um blaze antonio work together um i work with so many people i even work with aj records i work with um michael Payne. this guy uh, another rapper i work with so many people i guess I, I love collaborating with people yeah honest i love love collaborating with people and i don't i don't shun people it's art music is art and we just create you know what i mean um i just voice my opinion and just state the truth me calling out nobody me saying nothing for cause no beef with anybody you understand because we done some different level shit over this side so don't instigate nothing on the internet bro you understand because i won't respect that shit don't instigate nothing and the next thing too straight to the point you can't force nobody for work with you if they may want to work with you you understand i never ever force nobody for work with me the most i do is just reach out and ask i say yo i love your music i respect your art what's not i would love for you to collab if things go from there no problem but if somebody want to work you could never ever force nobody for work with you if they may want to work with you and you don't carry feelings about it this music and music is a business it's just move on to the next she's ready stay ready mister the ultimate male supplement men's total wellness formula packed with essential nutrients for men's health she'll call you mr c pnc supported the criminals who were there actively supported the criminals that wreak havoc on the country and the assessment what is not it was not normal crime it was insurgency by criminals supported by a political opposition.